Or maybe they just know something we don't. Maybe in scrims, Yao has been popping off on the floor and kicking people with the floor in. You, you, you never know, you know? <laughs> kicking people with the floor in. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Cho, but with a floor in skin on. When, when did this update roll out? I wasn't aware that was possible. <laughs> For Evos, though, they take away the CC that can be used to shred down the Barats and a Bruno, so no Assassin for now. Bruno on the CC. Last pick, is Arla going to be flexed into Rome or are they going to pick a Cho again? This time against Matilda, it's a bit tougher, I think, to pull off the Cho. Hmm. With the limited amount of burst damage, Rock. Ooh, I feel like Rock has some value here. Ebos already has a very low amount of real uh, ways to pick off. If they really want to go for a Grok, the only real threat would be a CC, maybe in the Mathilda. They can just run him down and chase him down with that continuous damage output. We want to go for an XP, Benedetta Potito. The Oran picks we are used to seeing. We saw Kara just earlier play the Potito against the CC. He was doing pretty well in the lane. So, drum rolls please, Grok. Oof. All right. That hints that it's going to be a lot of roam fighting, roam control contesting, especially in the jungle. When there's a Fredrin and the Barats, usually that jungling clear speed becomes something that's hotly contested. Who's the, who has the mid, mid lane cryo here? Between the Valentina... Matilda. The Valentina Grok and... Valentina Grok, Matilda, Vexana. I think it has to be Valentina Grok. Val, the, Val, the, Ve, the Valentina... Can uh, the shorten Vacantina. the Vacantina. <laughs> can shorten <laughs> the cooldown. She can shorten the cooldown on her spells, you know, with the with the dashes, and then with the Grok, of course, that's an extra big of uh, extra big addition of chunk damage. Whereas for Evos, the the Vexana has good clear, but the Mathilda not too much. So I think Aura will definitely have the mid try. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Evos looking to force a game number three from the Red Dragons. As we jump into the Land of Dawn, can Aura go 2-0? Or will we be seeing a game number three? Welcome to game number two. Into the Land of Dawn, we go. Whoa, hang on. That's a sprint in the hands of Kabuki. He's trying to move fast here. Earlier on the Roger, he went to the Great Dragon Spear. Now with the sprint. Again, the mobility seems to be a massive factor that Aura wants to try and abuse. But looking at the clear speed, Annabelle is doing a lot, you know, he's clearing a lot faster compared to Gugun, even though the Concussive Blast has already been selected as his emblem. Yeah, I actually really like the, the, the sprint here by Kabuki for this game. He needs a bit more of, um, you know, presence in lane. He needs to do battles as well in lane against the Bruno. With the sprint, you get that escapability. And also in these team fights. Claw and Annabelle, these are the two members who have the CC to lock people down. And most of the time, they should be utilizing it to Gugun in these team fights. Gugun will try to take it as well. So, yeah, I, I like the choice by Kabuki, but it can also be bad if, you know, obviously Evos actually target him down. But it's also going to be great if Fluffy tries to run him down, right? He can have more ways to get out, but look at this potential dive, the brands! Yep. I don't know as well. That's a sprint. That's a survivability you kind of need there. And he does survive and he pops a sprint. Sprinting out of danger right there. In the mid lane, it's uh, somewhat, somewhat the same. Everyone's just going to be uh, uh, active around the map. But for Brands, with the weapon mastery, he is banking on some items here to really start his journey to the late game to be that massive. Power fight. Ooh, okay. One vengeance reset, two vengeance resets, and a flicker, and, a, and another vengeance. The battle spell and the skill. Again, it's a very interesting matchup in the EXP lane. And I always like to remind you guys that Fluffy used to be in Aura. Aran simply replaced him in OA. But now, mutual objective contest. Yeah, we're not low four just yet. Pops into power nature right in front of Annabelle. That's his welcome. Oh, Annabelle rings it out. Gugun miscalculated. Finds Yaoi though the wild charge. On to Annabelle. As Gugun backs away. No members lost, just a turtle. Wow, that was unfortunate for Gugun, man. When you're that good, just the slightest margin of error means that you don't get it. That's the price of being that precise and that good. But ooh, blazing duet. Oh, oh, oh. Brands, 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 what? He jumps into the turret with a slight tackle. He wanted to stun. He did get the stun, but... Oh, no! 
Oh, that's, that's rough for Brent in that gold lane. Seeing as he's on a Bruno who would want to get that power spike a lot earlier than Kabuki on the clock. But back to that neutral objective contest, Annabelle is two levels ahead of Gugun. Now shrunk to one, but earlier on it was two. Gugun was level four. So maybe that is why Annabelle had a little bit more to say. And that's quite peculiar. What's going on with Gugun? Why is he falling behind? It's just the barrage clear speed that we've always hyped up. Especially, uh, again, even with the Concussive Blast, you can't really match it. You can get kind of close, but you can't really win out. He was able to secure the Litho as well earlier. That has a that plays a factor as well. And Yaoi, he's always been a clear component in, in Gugun being able to get a lot more space in, in stunning or maybe crowd controlling the opponent's junglers. So Anvil there generally can, have, can just focus on the retribution because he does have the daytime's welcome. But Yaoi also wasn't level four. So the space was lacking here. Brands picks up an item. Will that affect his laning phase? But wait a minute, Anabel looks for a pick on to Kabuki. Won't be able to get it, not now. Kabuki jumps back in to the battle mirror image. He plays down, and I think for Evos, they wanted to get some turret gold there. Mm -hmm. Two shots by Bruno. Good deny from Aura. Seems like for Evos, they're really reluctant to try and go in for a big dive for now. They don't really have the tools to really go for a massive amount of burst damage. And they just worry that they'll over uh, over commit and go in too deep when the turtle is up. So now it's back to the turtle contest. Wall charge, wall charge for Kurt and Kabuki just jumps in on the brands right now. Onto Brands, he goes the guiding win as well. The death is welcome. Used up by Annabelle. Onto the Fredrin, and that's gonna be still around with a double kill in the back. And Google securing it. A Brazier's rat. A big bomb down onto Annabelle. Around with a stun. Around with a triple. Around looking for the CC. Resets on the vengeance. Oh my goodness! It's a wipeout. In the fifth minute of the game, ladies and gentlemen, that fire has been reignited for Aura. What? Triple kill. Did you did you see what Arana was able to do in the backside? Yes. He was just demolishing the whole backside. With Kabuki, of course, and Yaoi. That was a whole team effort. And you talk about decisive. That's what you can expect to see. When you win, it's one-sided. Direct, when you lose, it's also a full-on wipeout at three, five minutes in the game. Now Aura have definitely secured the momentum and the control. 4,000 gold lead now for the Red Dragons. But the White Tigers are still looking for opportunities on the map. How is Brands looking in terms of his items? As we get a little peek into their head-to-head, -head, actually. Funny enough, these stats don't really seem too far from each other. Average KDA, Kabuki wins by 0.1. I mean, I guess it still counts. Average DP, uh, both per minute as well. An extra 10 to 20 for Kabuki. But for the most part, it's they, they have always been solid. It's just in the hero pool, but ooh, look at this. Chain down now, Aran. So Ava get those resets down. The final splash as well, Aran! Now with the help of Good Good resetting over to Annabelle. How many times will he be knocked up? How many times will he get the vengeance? Holy! Another win! Well charged! And the blazing to Kabuki Aura! Everyone is popping up! Fucking wall down! Barrier! You're stuck in here with the dragons! Aura woke up and chose violence today! What are what are these performances from all the members today? Aran, as slippery as can be in a 1v2 situation, still survives, buys enough time for Gugun to make it out. In the backline, meanwhile, Yaoi and Kabuki are doing work. Everyone is busy and everyone is finding value. And on top of that, to make things worse for Evos, he's able to get a turret in the top side. And Gugun is already on the way to claim the next neutral objective. It's just so tough for Evos right now. They are on the back foot. They've, sh they've already tried going for a full on 5v5. It did not work out in their favor. And then they go for a pickoff and it was immediately countered. Now I think they just have to try and go for trades and delay the game. It's not ideal. But at least in the late game, there is a chance that if they can weather the initial Blazing Duet, they can maybe zone Kabuki with a shorter range and try and get Brands a bit more active in these fights. Looking at the gold disparity, especially in the EXP and the gold lane, it's massive. But even in the roam position, the fact that Yaoi has always been has been so much more active, getting six assists is giving him a thousand gold lead over over the opposition. And with the Demon Hunter Sword and the Golden Staff completed for Kabuki, 
It's not a full-on power spike. The Corrigan Scythe will be a nice addition. But for now, at least, if he's left alone, and if, like, Fluffy takes a bunch of basic attacks like he's, we saw earlier under the turret, he can very easily get shredded down. Dreams has a photo now. Uh -oh. Conceal does get picked out. Oh. Oh, hey. hey. Uh, Nobody saw that. He went fine. for the Talia. He was close. Talia. It's fine. It's fine. Walk it off. 106. <laughs> <laughs> 7.53 gold lead. You mentioned the late game, Arashi. If this gets brought to the late game, what can we expect? I expect the gold leader still to be the main damage output. But for Aura, they're going to be a bit more front heavy. As in, they're going to be going head, head first into a lot of these fights. Whereas for Evos, like we've been saying, it's a bit more flexible, a bit more uh, adaptive if you can say. Especially with the Matilda, they can try and bait out a lot of spells initially, but against Yaoi, it's gonna be a tough order. Trying to make sure that he doesn't, you know, make him question himself when he's trying to go for a big engages. Let's see. Did he get it? Oh, he doesn't. Anavel still secures it there. Tried to bait out the Retribution because Lord is spawning, and here it is, Aura with an 8.7k gold lead, 9-0 and in 9 minutes, starting the Lord. Just earlier, we saw that the blade armor is secured for Gukun, so he wants all that physical defense. But it doesn't matter. No one's going to be coming to try and contest this Lord. That will be Aura. He's getting it. Going to go on to Fluffy now, and that's the Eternal Guard. Yaoi also getting the Eternal Guard. It's the Eternal Guard duel now. <laughs> that's unfair, man. Kabuki. The other Eternal Guard didn't have any you know, help from the team. Oh, Dynoman just running, shuffling in that mid lane. Fancy, fancy footwork there from Annabelle on the Barats, but now without the Daytona's welcome, it's gonna be a lot more defensive here, especially with his purple buff coming up. Gugun already trying to capitalize. He gets it. Did too. he get it? Yeah, he oh. gets it. Easy. Now, now Evos, they're walking on the back foot right now. The Lord is marching in the top lane, mm. but this mid wave is going to crash first. That bottom side he should be crashing real soon as well. I think, are they manipulating these waves properly? Seems oh, yeah. they're trying to build a slow for crashing it twice. I think it might come together in the base of Evos at about the same time. And if you talk about the clear that Evos has, Clockwin has only just finished the glowing one, only the second item. So it will help, but it won't be decisive. Flash up top, really made it out. Meanwhile, the mid lane also. They're actually going to be able to take it down with no problem. And there's another wave up top. Aura might just be looking to utilize that as Kabuki goes onto the orange buff. And no, they're happy with just the mid lane base turret taken down. It's a 10.5k gold lead in 10 and 15. Oh, 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 Fluffy. Yeah, what? Wow, that is a lot of damage. Kabuki fully stacked up with the Golden Staff, Corrosion, and DHS. And now he also has the... Win of nature, by the way. So even if Fluffy wants to try and match out in a duel, I think Kabuki comes out on top now. It means that Eagles, once again, starts losing more options in how they want to approach these fights. And Aura, they're oh setting up. Oh my god. It's been a while, Eterna. How do you feel? No comment. <laughs> no comment yet. No oh. comment yet. She's scared. She's not too sure if this will go the way she expects. We've seen a bit too many comebacks today for anyone to really be too happy. Right. Before now, Ente, kadang kadang Ente as well. Thrown out by Yaoi with those recalls. All right, four Evos though. With the Flash of the Oasis completed, finally, there's gonna be a bit more staying power in these fights, but they have to try and use crowd control here. The fact that Kabuki has no Purify, that has to be something that Evos need to be looking at, because even if they do have the extra bit of shielding, I think Kabuki is doing way too much damage, already finishing the Wind Talker. Six items, including the boots. But what about Brands? He already has two items on the way to his third. What item are we waiting for here? Probably the Malefic, maybe, to try and make sure, make sure that the frontliners, especially Gugun with like a blade armor, can actually be threatened by the basic attacks coming in. Because otherwise, especially for these very mobile fighters for the side of Aura. They can just keep moving in and out. Kabuki shredding the Lord. Yep. That's a full item quad for you. That's what it does. Wow. Okay. So that's a free Lord for Aura and 
So once Brand gets the Malefic, is that a moment where Aura needs to be aware of? Needs to be... Yeah, aware of. Oh, even then. Do you think it's enough? Oh, there you go, Malefic Roar. All right, yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's enough. He'll have damage, but there's a lot of tank in the still, a lot of HP for the side of Aura. And about gonna hold down from that Lord Kabuki up top, just sieging it down as a wave in the bottom lane. It's all very, very slowly building up for Aura. Annabelle can be final stash into the midst of it all. Kabuki just dragging him down as Annabelle will fall to Aura with vengeance. Now Aura going in for the vengeance stacks again, and the Brazers wrap out to the back as he gets terrified. But a wave in the bottom lane comes crashing down Kabuki! Blazing to win it! Yeah, has skill! Oh my lord! Fluffy now with the vengeance still aiming to survive, and Aura is an absolute assassin! Still good peel by Klonkun. And now they go for Fluffy, he gets bursted down like it's nothing. Kabuki's still alive, has the immortality, now gets bursted down as well. But the immortality is the only thing that gets popped. Aura fly high once again, they burn. The chances of Evo to make it to the playoffs with this match. The Red Dragons with their wings clipped by the Red Robots yesterday have come back and found their fire the fire that was missing the fire that faltered